y'all. Welcome to Miss Clark's chemistry class. In this lesson, we're going to talk specifically about the electromagnetic spectrum. Now, this is the first part of a series of lessons on electrons and how they act as light energy and as particles. So since we're talking about electrons in this unit, we need to spend a little bit of time talking about light energy. So make sure you have your notes, have something to write with, and let's get started. Electromagnetic waves. This is the energy given off by stars. Even our sun, we are receiving electromagnetic waves here on Earth from the sun, and they can travel through space infinitely, I guess. So we call this energy electromagnetic waves. Sometimes it's also called electromagnetic radiation. Again, the energy given off from the sun. This is a combination of waves, and when we break this down into the waves' individual wavelengths and frequencies, that's when we get the electromagnetic spectrum. Here, let me show you. You may have even seen this before. So electromagnetic waves, when broken down, is called the electromagnetic spectrum. And in this spectrum, we've got radio waves, microwaves, infrared waves, visible light, ultraviolet light, x-rays, and gamma rays. And each one of these different types of waves have different wavelengths. That's why we're seeing this image here. We're gonna talk more about that. But they also have different frequencies. And since they have different frequencies, they carry different amounts of energy. Again, we're gonna get into more of these specifics in just a minute. But I just kind of wanted to show you the overall spectrum. So I have said three different words. All of them begin with electromagnetic. So let's make sure that we understand the difference between these three words. So first we've got electromagnetic radiation. Electromagnetic radiation specifically is referring to the energy itself. This is the energy given off from stars and the sun, because the sun is a star, and this energy is traveling through space. So electromagnetic radiation is the energy that's traveling through space. Electromagnetic waves is how the energy travels. The energy is traveling in a wave. And then we have the electromagnetic spectrum, which I feel like I pretty much defined on the previous slide. This is when we break it down into the individual portions based on wavelength and frequency. All forms of electromagnetic waves travel at the speed of light. It doesn't matter if it's a radio wave or a gamma wave, they are all going to travel at the speed of light. And let's define the speed of light. Now we use lowercase c, that's the symbol for speed of light, and the speed of light is 2.998 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. You may be doing calculations with the speed of light as you travel in deeper into this unit. You know, I'm realizing I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. We haven't even talked about just basic waves. Waves always carry energy. Even if we're talking about an ocean wave, think about hurricanes, tsunamis. Ocean waves carry a lot, a lot of energy. Okay, so let's look at a wave. If I'm going to draw like an X and Y axis, and then I draw a transverse wave. Let's label the parts of a wave. Okay, so we've got a wavelength. A wavelength is basically what the word says. It's the length of a wave. But let's be a little bit more specific. A wavelength is the length of a full oscillation. Y'all, I don't know how to spell oscillation. I think that's right. So if we were looking at the origin of this wave and it starts here, it needs to travel all the way up, all the way down, and back to the midpoint. So we could say that was a wavelength. But it doesn't always have to start at the origin. We could start up here at the top. If I were to start up at the top, we would travel the downside, keep going down, up, up, up the upside. Here's a full oscillation. So we could even say, this is a wavelength. This is a wavelength. 
We could even measure from the bottom of the wave to the next bottom of the wave if I would have continued to draw my wave all the way through. Now, the symbol for wavelength is Greek letter lambda. Greek letter lambda. It looks like an upside down Y. So I'm going to label this wavelength up here with Greek letter lambda because that means wavelength. Let's label some more things on this on this wave. The tops of waves are called crests and the bottom of waves are called troughs. Crest and trough. And then we have one more part that I want to label the height of a wave. Now I hand drew this wave so it is not very consistent but the amplitudes of waves, that's what this is called, amplitudes. I jumped in and said the name. Amplitude. The amplitude of a wave is going to stay consistent. Whatever the amplitude is from the midline to the crest will be the same amplitude as from the origin to the trough all the way through the wave. Again, I just didn't draw my wave very consistently because I just sketched it out real quick. Now the amplitude, that's going to be the intensity of the wave. So if we're talking about a light, the amplitude, it's going to be brighter or dimmer. If we're talking about a sound wave, which by the way is not this style of wave, but if we were talking about the amplitude, then we'd be talking about the volume, how loud it is. Okay, so we've got wavelength, crest, trough, amplitude. We do need to note before we move any farther that wavelength is a length and that it is measured in meters. That's the base unit for length and wavelengths do measure length. Okay, so we just talked about wavelength, the length of a wave, but we also need to get another word, frequency. The frequency of a wave is how many waves can go by in a second. How many waves can pass by some point, whatever given point it is, but it's in one second. How many waves can pass by in one second? So when we talk about frequencies unit, one of the units is per second. And we write that like that, per second. And then this gentleman came along, Hertz, and he had a big contribution. And so we named this unit Hertz, per second or Hertz. And again, frequency is how many waves can go by a given point in a second. So if we were looking at a wave, oh, you know what? Let's talk about its symbol right quick, symbol. We talked about the symbol for wavelength is Greek letter lambda for wavelength and that the unit was meters. The symbol for frequency is Greek letter nu. And it just kind of looks like a fancy V, lowercase v. This is Greek letter nu. Y'all know there is another way you can um, express per seconds because that's like the inverse of seconds. And so you can also do the negative one for the inverse of seconds. If we were to look at a wave, if we were to look at two waves, I'm going to draw, I'm going to sketch out two waves. Okay, there's the first one. Here's the second one. And I were to ask you, which wave had a higher frequency? Wave number one or wave number two? Remember, the amount of waves that can pass by in a second is the frequency. So if we were just to say, here's our starting point, and here is one second, then we can clearly see that wave number two, more waves are going to pass by in a second. This is what a high frequency wave looks like. And then we have this low frequency wave. A little bit slower, cumbersome. But are we noticing something? And if we're not noticing, let me help us notice this right quick. This wave that has a really low frequency, right? Not many waves are going past in a second. Low frequency. Not very many waves are going by because the wave is so long. So low frequency waves have a long wavelength, right? Do we see that? It takes, this wave doesn't get very many waves past the one second mark because it's so dang long. And then if we look at this wave with a high frequency, lots of waves went by in one second, and so many went by in one second because look how short they are. If we're measuring from crest to crest, look at the difference. Crest to crest here, crest
crest to crest here. So again, waves with high frequency are going to have smaller wavelengths. They're going to be shorter. Do we need to write that out in words? Low frequency is going to mean long wavelengths. And if we have high frequency, then the wavelengths are going to be short. I hope we can still see that. Did I run off the page? You know what? While we're getting these vocab words, let's go ahead and get one more. Let's talk about energy. We said that waves carry energy. So we're going to need to talk about the energy of the waves. Now, energy, we normally just use capital letter E for energy. The base unit for energy is joule. Calories, that's another unit for energy, calories. That's why we measure our food with calories. How much energy is stored in this food? Now, when we talk about energy, let's look at our waves again. And of course, I'm not going to be able to reproduce them perfectly. Now, we've already talked about how wavelength and frequency relate. The longer the wavelength, the smaller the frequency. The shorter the wavelength, the higher the frequency. But how does that translate into energy? If I were just to, again, blindly ask without us having much information, which wave looks like it has more energy? The first wave or the second wave? Now, maybe because I'm the teacher, but I am really feeling like this second wave looks like it's carrying more energy. I don't know. That just looks more energetic to me. And that is the relationship. When a wave has a high frequency, more waves are going past a point. If more waves are going past and waves carry energy, a high frequency wave is going to carry a lot of energy. So when you have a high frequency wave, that carries a lot of energy. And then vice versa. This wave up top, we said that it has a small frequency. Not many waves are going past. And so we would also say that this wave is not carrying very much energy. Do we need to write that one out in words too? Let's do it. Low frequency is also going to mean it's carrying low amount of energy. And then high frequency means we're going to be carrying a lot of energy. Let's see how that translates to the electromagnetic spectrum. Okay, so we already briefly talked about what the electromagnetic spectrum is composed of. Radio waves. Now, I am showing this from longest wavelength. Here, let me write that. At this end, we are going to have a long wavelength. This end over here is going to have a short wavelength. See that? From crest to crest, and then all the way from crest to crest. Okay, also, let's go ahead and just write all those relationships real quick. We might as well. If this end over here has a long wavelength, then we know that also means it's carrying less energy because it has less frequency. And then if we go over to the end with the very short wavelengths, then we know that that means these are very high energy waves because they have a really high frequency. So when we talk about these waves and like ways of safety, like for our health, radio waves are going to be the most safe because they're the lowest energy wave. They're the longest wave. Their wavelengths, again in meters, is 1 times 10 to the 3 meters. That is a kilometer. So if we're talking about really tall skyscrapers, that would be the wavelength of one wave. Radio waves. We know about radio waves. Do we even still listen to the radio? Like you turn the radio on in your car and you listen to an actual station. You're tuned in to a certain frequency, right? See how this all comes together? Anyway, the frequency is down here. Again, this is in hertz per second. So 1 times 10 to the 4 waves per second are going to pass by radio waves. Then we've got microwaves. Microwaves, yeah, we, we use these to cook our food in our microwave ovens. Also, this is how our cell phones transmit to the cell tower microwaves. Their wavelengths are a little bit shorter, maybe the length of an average size human. But look at the difference. We went all the way from a positive exponent to a negative exponent. 1 times 10 to the negative 2 is a centimeter. The wavelength went from a kilometer to a centimeter. Then we've got infrared. This might make you think of like infrared night vision. So infrared is going to see heat. 
Then we have the portion of the electromagnetic spectrum that we can see with our own eyes, the visible light, the rainbow. We need to know the order of the rainbow from longest wavelength to shortest wavelength or from low energy to high energy. Remember, we're following the same order, long wavelength to short wavelength, from low energy to high energy. So red has the lowest energy, whereas violet has the highest energy. We've got red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indico, violet. Have you ever heard of that mnemonic device to remember the order of the rainbow, Roy G. Biv? It gives it to you in order of the rainbow from low energy to high energy. Roy G. Biv, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. So visible light, that's what we can see. Then next we go to ultraviolet. Ultraviolet lights, uh, maybe old school tanning beds. Don't go tan in a tanning bed, it's terrible for your skin because the waves are very high energy. See how close we're getting to the very highest energy? Ultraviolet light, this is why the sun can cause damage to our skin because the UV waves are so energetic that they're causing damage to our cells. They can cause damage to our cells because look how small the wavelength is. We're talking about the size of molecules. Visible light, I skipped the size of that. Protozoa, single-celled organisms, pretty small. X-rays. X-rays are very energetic. We know X-rays can be harmful for our health, also good for our health if we're needing to know about our bones being broken. But also think about when you go to the dentist and they put that lead vest on you. Actually, that's my very favorite part to tell you the truth. But that's why. X-rays are terrible for us because they're so small. They can get into our body, shake around, and cause damage in our cells because the wavelengths are so small. They're so small, they're the size of atoms. That is how x-rays can cause cancer. They can get into our cells, mess with the mechanisms, cause our cells to start growing uncontrollably. X-rays, very high energetic, wavelength is teeny tiny, so it causes more damage to our health. And then the most energetic, very, very dangerous, gamma rays, gamma radiation. Look how small this is, one times 10 to the negative 12th meters. I think that's like a billionth of a meter. We're talking about the size of a nucleus. The gamma rays can get into the nucleus of our atoms and really cause damage. This is when, I think of radiation sickness. Have we ever heard of people getting radiation sickness from like radiation fallout? This is the type of radiation that is causing this damage, gamma radiation. Very high energy, very tiny wavelength. Now we do need to know all of the parts of the spectrum and their order from low energy to high energy. And I do have a mnemonic device for that. Raging Martians invade Venus using X-ray. Aw oh, dang, guns. Raging Martians invade Venus using X-ray guns. Radio, microwave, infrared, visible, ultraviolet, x-ray. That one was easy, right? And then gamma. Now this was just a little introduction into the electromagnetic spectrum. Parts, a little bit about wavelength, frequency, energy, how they all relate to each other. Now you may be needing to learn how to do calculations when it comes to the speeds of these waves. Calculating the different frequencies, the different wavelengths. I do have a lesson for that, so make sure and stay tuned for that if you need help. Until next time, bye y'all.